Welcome back to our sample exercises for Intro to 1, 2, 3D. Uh, in, uh, in this exercise, I'm actually going to make a, uh, like a little lamp, a basic desk lamp with a uh, flexible looking, um, one of those little kind of hose-like necks. Um, we're going to be using a lot of lofting and uh, some sweeping and some of the advanced techniques that we learned in those later videos. So I'm going to go ahead and just begin. And I'm going to start by putting down some circles just like this. Now, if you're, uh, I'm not going to pay attention too much to the measurements. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this one. And I'm bringing up a circle like this, scaling it down just a little bit, copying and pasting this circle, bringing it up a little more, and scaling it down. And let's give a little bit more height to it, like that. But I'm going to leave that one alone. So I'm going to use that trick I showed you before, where I select, shift select, shift select, shift select the uh, sketches in order before I loft them. And then when I loft them, they're going to look kind of like that. I'm going to see what happens if I start squeezing that in. You know what? That does not look good. I'm not going to squeeze those. I'm just going to loft them normally. Oops. Not what I wanted. I need to select, shift select, shift select, shift select, and then loft it again. And that's going to be the head of my lamp. I'm going to get rid of these sketches, and I am going to fill it with these, with this rim right there, just to give it a curved end. There we go. Come out to the bottom. Select this bottom face and shell it out. Give it a little bit of thickness there. Um, you know what? Let's take these ends and fillet them as well, just to give it all a more overall rounded look. Oh, looks like I messed up there. Right at the end, we had some kind of invalid operation. See, that looks good. All right. Now to draw the rest of it, I need to need to turn this 90 degrees uh, against my work grid. Let's see, is that what I want? Yeah, perfect. Okay. That'll give me a good visual to draw the rest, because I want a neck that comes out like this, curving out. So for that, I am going to draw using a spline, drawing on the work grid, and just to be safe, let's get into orthographic mode and come it out like this. Uh, go, there we go, give it a little bit of a bend. There. And end it there. Get myself a straighter end here like that. And I am going to want a disc to sweep across that. So let's grab myself a cylinder, bring it down to a height of 2, and a radius. Let's try, oh, whoa, way too big. Uh, 6 looks about good. And bring that up like that. 90 degrees move it into position right over here. All right. I'm going to grab a sweep, sweep this profile along that path, and that looks pretty neat. Let's look at it from the top. Okay, I'm going to extrude that in pretty soon. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, it is a little bit wider than I'd like it to be. So what I want to do is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce the radius of this disk a little bit, but not before I copy it and paste it, because there's a little bit something different I want to I want to use this for a little bit later. What I can do is I can actually use press pull on the, on the side of a cylinder and just drag it in, and that's actually going to reduce the radius by a little bit. I'm going to re-sweep the profile across the path like that. And I'm pretty much good there. And I'm going to take this one and see if I can achieve the effect that I'm going for here. I'm going to use a path pattern with this as the solid and this as the path and bring it out like that, bring it in a path direction like this, give myself a bunch more, and sweep it across like this. And the more instances of it that I add, the more it's going to look like it's one of those little, like, flexible hoses. I'm going to need a lot of them. Uh, let's give it... I'm going to stop at 50 before I crash my program here. All right. That doesn't look half bad. 
All right. I'm going to take out a couple of these down here because they don't look so great. And like I said, I think, uh, well, let's hope my program isn't crashing here. Sometimes when you do these operations, uh, it can overload 123D design more than I'd like. Okay, but, but we did make it. Uh, so it looks like my computer pulled through. You know, whether yours can do it is a gamble. You don't have to sweep a, uh, a pattern across this to make it look like a flexible hose if you don't want. Uh, but that's there for you if you'd like. Um, the unfortunate part is that merge doesn't just have a kind of select all feature where I can merge everything all at once. I am going to have to click every single one of these one by one if I want to merge them together. Uh, but that is sometimes what we have to put up with when we use free software. Of course, you can always use um, Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 if you want to upgrade to something a little bit uh, swankier. Uh, and I've, I've tried it. It's, uh, I, I would recommend it. It's a pretty neat one uh, if you're okay with the, uh, if the cloud storage. Uh, all right, so I've got everything merged there, and I hit Enter, and... That's going to look all right. I am going to come over here and trim the end of it off a little bit uh, with a polyline. Get that, get that, and just come across like this and like that, and extrude. Actually, you know what? Let's just split the solid and delete what's left. There. Take that chunk out. I'm done with my path. And then all I have to do is basically bring these into alignment. I'm going to select them both, uh, align them, and make sure that they're all intersecting at the center, not that center. Let's bring those back out and reselect them. Align. There we go. What I want is this center merged, and then this one, like that. And exit alignment out of here. Now for here, I can pretty much just drag that upward. And that is going to look pretty nice. Okay. Last thing I got to do is make the base, uh, which is just a simple revolve technique. And you can make this look uh, as crazy as you want. I'm going to draw a polyline, kind of stretching out like this, and going up to give myself an axis to revolve around. And then let's just grab a spline out of here and give myself a little bit of gentleness at the, at the top so I have somewhere to stick the, uh, the hose into. And then I can make just kind of any decorative little curve going down like that. And after that, I just revolve it around the axis. Here we are. Revolve, axis, all the way around, 360. And there's the base of that. And I just slide that into position. Again, all I have to do is uh, I want these all to align in, in that direction, in, in, along the Z, like that, so that they're all centered. Let's home my view again and move that, just tweaking these little, little moves into position there. Perfect. And that's not going to look too bad. I may want to take this and rotate it so it looks a little bit more natural. There we go. Okay. Doesn't look half bad. Uh, uh, now, of course, revolving to draw a light bulb, I, I tried it a couple of times and uh, found it to be quite tedious, so I'm going to cheat on this one. I'm going to grab a a light bulb from one of the sample stuff that uh, that one two three D uh, gives me, and you know what? Let's uh, let's be energy conscious, of course, and drag that into here. And oh, it's following my mouse. Way too big. Smart scale it down. Actually, a normal scale would have worked as well. There, that's a nice size. Rotate it. 
90 degrees again. And I've been surprised at how much a line has really come in handy uh, in this uh, in this exercise, uh, because you got a lot of pieces that you want to line along a single axis. So just to make sure that that's at the right height, let's select all these again, align, and align them all on this dot. And I can just drag that right through here, come at it from the front, and that looks pretty neat. And just for the sake of cosmetics, I can give some uh, material tones to this. I'm going to use the iron, make it nice and dark. And where's my iron? Right there. There we go. That's going to wrap it up for the lamp exercise. See you in the uh, following videos.